Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's class. We're going to start out with some class announcements. The first one is your first assignment is due this Friday by midnight. Please be sure to log into the platform and upload all your documentation before the assignment locks out. The next reminder is the fact that your second project milestone is due next week. This should include your team listing, the company that you're researching, and your initial round of due diligence. We're going to start this week's class out with a recap from last week where we talked about the DCF analysis. A reminder that all evaluation models based on the DCF framework is what was covered last week. Remember, the key is to estimate future cash flows. And earnings are generally the starting point, and that's how you back out to get the cash flow. Abnormal earnings, the valuation, is a DCF based model that relies on accounting earnings looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the abnormal earnings is something that we covered last week. We're going to go ahead and watch a video that highlights last week's class before we move into next week's class, or this week's class. As we discussed in the last video, the dividend discount model could be used to come up with a valuation for a firm based on the amount of dividends that we expect that the firm is going to issue over time, right? So we can value the firm as just this stream into the future of dividend payments that we will discount back to their present value. But there's a couple issues with this, and one being that it's difficult to forecast dividends correctly, but also there are several things that are under managerial discretion that will actually affect uh, the dividend discount model. So let's jump into an example. So that closes out the recap from last week, and now we're going to go ahead and move forward with this week's cover coverage of valuation comparisons. So we're going to start out by comparing the market price, which is something that would be like a stock price, and compare it to a benchmark of fundamental value, like cash flows. If you look at the image below, we are going to talk about doing valuation comparison in the real estate area. So you start at the top with a market survey looking at rent and occupancy information. You'd move forward going clockwise around the image and get property characteristics next, and that, that would lead you to the tenant survey where you get credit and payment status information on the current tenants. You would then look at the asking price for the existing property before you move forward to get the comparable transactions, where you would get past information on the existing property as well as comp information to compare and give you a balanced valuation of your, of your real estate location. We're going to move forward and we're going to talk about financial ratio comparisons and talking about different types of ratio analysis that you can conduct. First would be the, the liquidity ratios. This are, these are measures of the firm's short-term ability to pay maturing obligations. The activity ratios are measures of how effectively an enterprise is using assets. Profitability ratios are measures of success or failure given, given a certain time period. Investor ratios are measures that are of interest specifically to the investors. And leverage ratios are measures of the company's ability to meet their financial obligations. And I believe Alexa has a question she'd like to pose to the class. So which business sectors would be more likely to use something like liquidity ratios? That's a great question, Alexa. Great question, Alexa. When you're thinking about liquidity, liquidity ratios, You'll want to think of anyone who's extending credit that can be impacted by someone's ability to pay. So two markets that would be a great place to start would be the retail and the real estate market. Now we're going to talk about some limitations of DCF. So you need to think about if a firm has any unknown history, unknown implementation timing, an unknown co com competition, or unknown cost structure. Projecting an unknown growth trajectory is very difficult while using DCF. Some other limitations of DCF are they may miss growth options, it may miss the option to expand, or an option to redirect. So you may need to adjust projections in your gap expense treatment for your R&D. You may also think about that when you're thinking about customer acquisition costs and select LT marketing. It's basically all difficult and you need to keep all these limitations in, into account when you're doing your, DC, your analysis. Now we're going to talk about your group exercise, which is a case study on Target. You'll want to start by looking for benchmark firms, such as Walmart, 
JCPenney, or Sears. You'll also want to make some assumptions when doing your analysis. You'll want to assume the market correctly sets the competitor stock prices, that all firms have the same level of risk, assume cash flow growth is similar across all the firms, and accounting techniques to calculate earnings were similar across all the firms as well. This has an implication that the, the P&E model is the same for competitors and the target corporation. While doing your multiple valuation approach, you want to take the average P&E for the competitors, multiply by target's EPS to obtain the predicted price of target. And I believe Jeremy might have a question about this. You want us to want extend to valuation over? That's right. You should make sure you take into account four quarters or one year's worth of data while doing your analysis for this case study. This brings us to our checkpoint. I'd also I'd like to remind you that your group project presentations are going to be part of next week's class. And also remind you that the midterm is coming up on the 12th of January and you should start studying now. And of course, I'm available at any time for any questions you may have on the discussion board at any time. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy, I enjoyed the class.